We got the Hurricane back here on the program. Gerald Harris is going to be making his Bellator debut this Saturday <laughs> against Rafael Lovato Jr. in a catchweight fight. Gerald, what's going on, man? How are you? What's up? This is actually the only promotion that I haven't fought for. I know. I think my, I think my checklist is done. Yeah. Well, did you did you ever fight in the IFL? Yeah, I fought. That's my oh, only two Oh, yeah, that's right. Losses. You did. That's right. I fought Fabio Leopoldo, and I fought um, a, a guy I shouldn't have fought. I had only been training for like four months when I fought in the IFL. Uh, I started fighting in September, and that April, I think, I was in the IFL. It was crazy. It, was, it wasn't even six months of training, so... Uh, yeah, I'm I'm a lot better now. That was over ten years. That was twelve years ago. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's been a while for sure. Um, now, uh, obviously, the world tour continues here with Bellator. How did this all come together? Because uh, you know when when I you know we'd done interviews in the past, I didn't know that Bellator was even on your radar. My boy Mikhail hit me up from Oklahoma City, and uh, I've been getting a lot of calls lately. Um, I actually got a great offer from the Professional Fighting League, a little bit um, different than what I wanted, so I turned it down. And I literally kind of dreaded it every day. I mean, I even tell my wife, like, damn, what was I thinking? And I was like, man, I hope something comes along. You know, UFC, uh, Bellator, um, you got a Risen. I mean, I'm open to anything. You know, I got to feed my family. And as far as me coming out of retirement, it was because I just, my career wasn't going anywhere. You know what happened. I got on the show. I got hurt. I fought two local shows. When I started selling tickets, man, that was, that was kind of the last straw when I was like, hey, guys, come to my fight. It's really hard to physically sell tickets, and that's nothing against anybody. But a call like this, man, how could you pass up opportunity to be on the same card as Fedor? Um, so with all that being said, I came out of retirement silently about six weeks ago. I've been training, so I'm not just taking this fight to make a quick paycheck. I'm really going out there to win, you know. But a uh, four-day notice is the the, the – the latest notice fight I've ever got. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's against a really tough opponent in Rafael Lovato Jr., who's undefeated. Um, just initial thoughts on the matchup uh, facing a guy who's never uh, lost a fight? It's the first time for everything, you know. Um, I was a little frustrated way, the way they handled negotiations because I was willing to take the fight on short, short notice. They kind of played with the weights a little bit. You know, I asked for 190. They said 188, which I felt was real petty, especially um, coming from such a high, highly respected BJJ. Wait, that's just less weight I got to cut, but I guess they want me to cut more weight and be at even more disadvantage. Like, so that was a little frustrating um, for me, um, a little personal. So, yeah, I'm, I'm a little pissed off about that. But other than that, I'm fine. Well, I was going to say, too, the interesting thing with Lovato is, you know, he either wins by decision or wins by submission. Uh, you're a guy that's got, you know, obviously great submission defense and, and everything else. Um, do, do you like the matchup as far as, uh, you know, uh, how you square off against him? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure they have a, a idea how the fight, they think the fight's going to go, but I don't know. People usually, um, they watch film, they see my habits, but you can never predict how my fight's going to go. So, and I can't. I just go in there and, you know, I have a game plan, but I'm kind of down for whatever. So I don't want to say whatever happens, happens, but we don't go in there and you're not going to hear me in a prep con press conference going, I better wrestler, I'm going to take him down and ground and pound. This is stupid. You're just giving away your blueprint for the fight. <laughs> We're going to fight. It's a fight. I got to be smart. I know I got my hands full. He had a full camp. You know, I'm coming off the couch. You know, I've been training, but it wasn't camp, you know. But I'm a fighter. I know how to fight. You know, I, I used to fight for $300. So when they called me and gave me a great opportunity, Bellator was cool as hell. Like, seriously. I, I've only talked to them once. It was a long time ago. It didn't go great. And, you know, I don't know who's, like, all involved right now, but they were so cool. I mean, they called me, talked to me. It was, it was so, uh, it was business, but it felt personal. The guy I spoke to, I believe his name was Rich. Yeah, Rich Chow. He, yeah, he's a matchmaker. Rich was cool, man. He, he made me real comfortable. Um, I had a little manager situation. Ali, me and Ali had been in verbal agreements for him to be my manager. But since my friend got this fight for me and he's a manager, I called Ali and I said, hey, Ali, man, you're my dude. I, I just got to be straight up honest with you. My boy presented this opportunity for me and boom. I got. I can't undercut him. You know what I'm saying? It was his deal. So Ali was really cool about it. I'm not sure what's going to happen after this fight and contracts over. But hey, I got a four fight fight deal. Oh, you got I didn't four even fights? Know that. That's awesome. I thought, was, I thought it was a one hitter quitter, and I think that Bellator really respectfully um, wants to give me more fights after this. So. Yeah. Plus, I mean, there's there's that whole backing with Paramount. I mean, you're a comedian on, on the side. There's a lot of opportunities here for you. Uh, you know, fighting for Bellator. 
I'm actually waiting on a response from Comedy Central for my own half hour special. What? So hopefully, Look at you. This, yeah, man. Uh, it's been a good week. I don't think any organization has ever fully taken advantage of my abilities. And I'll say that because I should have capitalized more on my, my comedy skills and stuff like that. So, yeah, it, it's, it's a double-edged sword. I'm going to be myself this time. Uh, I think Bellator has, does a great job of – I see guys doing their own walkouts. Look at King Mo. That's my boy. I'm back with Rampage, Chell signing, Vader. I know all these guys. Um, I ain't going to lie, man. I'm a big fan of Fedor. So, like, I'm going to, like, like – I'm not going to like jump up and down like a girl when I see him, but <laughs> he'll still have the fa same facial response. It won't matter. Just that cold stare. stare, you know? So. Yo, if I make Fedor smile, my, I'm done. Yeah, exactly. Might as well my just retire like, right there. Yeah, that's crazy. Even if you don't know what I'm saying, if he just cracks a smile, like I'm done. So you, you talked a bit about how you're not really, I mean, you, you've been training, but it hasn't been like a training camp. Uh, who have you been working with as far as, uh, you know, at the gym, putting the time in? I got the right people. <clears throat> no big names, but. I just, I just got the right people, good training partners, same people I've been training with since I was fighting in, in the you know, UFC and all that when I started fighting for real. It's funny. I don't do training camps. Um, I just stay in shape. And if I get a call, I'll go fight. And I do pick it up towards the end. This time I didn't have time to pick it up. Um, the picking up is more of a weight cut. But I fought a guy in Texas on six-day notice for my first fight at 170. So they called me on Saturday. I took the fight, and I cut down to 170. Luckily, I had just done a, a um, test cut to 70. I got to 78, and I was like, I couldn't make it anymore. But with that test cut, I was already low enough to go ahead and try to make 170. So you can call me crazy, but hey, I'll do anything for my family. You know, I'll tell you this, man. If anybody thinks I'm about to do this for a paycheck, um, they are. Yes, I, I want to get paid. I got a family. Dude, I'm on my eighth child. So... <laughs> You know, my oldest boy just turned 18. He graduates. He's going to college. You know, my wife's pregnant. Uh, we have a business together. I don't, I have my, I'm, I'm self-employed. So when the financial opportunity came, I was like, oh my God, thank you. You know, um, so the risk is not greater than the reward in this situation. I feel like this is just, I'm going to have fun, man. It's the first time, and it sounds crazy, that I feel like I can really have fun out there. Yeah, and just what's your mentality going in here? Because, you know, he's got the undefeated record. He's sort of expected to win this fight, and he's, you know, got aspirations for fighting for the title. You really have nothing to lose here uh, coming in here on short notice and being able to take out a guy who's undefeated. Yeah, I just got to be smart, and I think I'm going to surprise him with some stuff. I'm not going to say it's a secret, but uh, I surprise a lot of people with things, and they're just like, whoa. They always talk to me after the fight, and I'm just like, oh, my gosh. Like, I didn't know that you were that strong or you hit that hard or, you know. So that's the beauty of the, the situation. Um, my current situation is just trying to make weight. Uh, my wife's trying to work on a flight out there. I uh, got my cornerman set. It's funny, I got an old, a guy I fought a year ago gave me a hell of a time, uh, Brian Green. He's uh, 34 and 32, all 34 wins by finish. He fights anybody on day notice. I turned the fight down and gave it to him. And he was like, dude, I just boxed and, and – and uh, he put on some weight. He's like, I don't know. He said, I'm down for any fight. He said, but I don't think I can make the weight for this fight. And I was like, damn. I said, you know what? I'm going to do it. He's like, do it. Dog. He's been texting me since we fought last year to come out of retirement. And he's actually probably going to be one of my cornermen. Um, I try. I'm super superstitious with my corner. Uh, only with my coach's approval. But I, it's current, isn't that a coincidence that someone you fought and defeated ends up wanting to help you so much and he really he's he's watching he's studying a tape he's coming out tomorrow he's gonna stay with me for a few days now if he beat me he ain't finna be in my corner i'm sorry <laughs> that's bad luck but uh it was a good fight i mean it was close i had to you know for the first time in a long time i had to utilize my ground and pound but um he knows my strengths he knows my weaknesses he's been in there with me who, who else better to help you out in the fight so shout out to brian green man Good stuff. How is the weight? I got to ask. I mean, we're, we're a couple days away. You don't have to give me an exact number, but are things looking good to make the 188? Yeah, I won't make, I won't put a number out there. I'm not sure how the commission works. It's not, it's crazy, but it's not outrageous. I wasn't fat, you know. Um, I was heavy. Um, probably, I would say t two months ago, I was the heaviest. I, I, was, I was 20 two months ago, I'll say that. And that was um, from not doing anything. And I woke up and started getting my butt back in shape. I started running, lifting. And I started um, rolling, I started sparring, you know, and boom, I lost 15 pounds, you know what I'm saying? So when they called me, I was like, oh, I did the math, and I said, I'm real, I'm a super nerd when it comes to cutting weight. I only cut a certain amount of pounds per day. 
and I'm, I'm fine. I'll make it. It won't be a big deal. It won't be fun. Um, I won't look sucked out. I mean, imagine me making 170. That's that's no. skeletal. <laughs> yeah, it's I tough. Always work. So uh, I just want to get to win. I'm gonna get there tomorrow. Do press conferences, sign posters, um, and I just and I'm cutting my phone off. My phone will be off tonight, and my wife and my mom are the, and my manager and are the only people that will have my other phone number. Good, good to know. Uh, last question for you here, and I know this is so fresh. Sometimes it's hard to think this way, but do you feel like a win will sort of put you in the driver's seat to a title shot? Because that's the way Rafael's heading uh, as far as his career in Bellator. Do you feel like a win there will kind of put you close to to a title shot? Man, it's gonna. Sound, I don't even want a title shot right now. Um, honestly, after this fight, we'll probably renegotiate, depending on how it goes. Um, I'm not really in a rush to the title. I'm not really in a rush to have five rounds. Uh, I don't really. I don't say I don't care for a title. I really just want to go out there and put on a show. And if that leads me to getting a title shot, I'm not going to ask for one. I'm not calling anybody out. That middleweight champion is a monster. Um, I've watched him fight. He's He beat Melvin Menhoff twice. The first time it was close. second time he kicked him and almost killed him. But um, they have a deep roster. Um, I'm not going – a lot of people don't know I'm not going 70 anymore. I'm done with 170. I'm going back up to middleweight. Uh, but, yeah, I'll tell you this, man. I won't be asking to come back and fight. Uh, Rory McDonald, I want to be on that card. I'm more excited about being on cards. Um, being the Bellator champion financially, yes, it's probably a lot better. But if I can make that kind of money and put on a good show, um, I don't know. i got to take the kind of the Conor McGregor approach, minus all the crazy stuff. But you have to promote yourself, man. Your fight alone is not going to do it. I mean, Conor's fights are exciting, but, I mean, he didn't do anything much different than uh, Al Quinta knocking everybody out. Um, it's just his personality. People love him. You got to get people to love you. It's just like the WWE. People make fun of those guys, but they got millions of followers online. You know what I'm saying? They can't even yeah. go out to you. The brand is go... strong. Exactly. You got to brand yourself, and that's what I'm working on. I'm 38, so I don't got a lot of time. But yeah, hey, age is just better... a number, <laughs> as you've proven in your last couple fights. It's and... better late than never. Exactly. Well, we're looking forward to it coming up here uh, th this weekend, man. I'm so stoked for this fight. Uh, it's uh, yourself and uh, Rafael Lovato Jr. Gerald, man, it was great getting a chance to talk to you. I appreciate you giving me time. Just uh, remind people where they can find you on social media. And if you got any sponsors or shout outs, the floor is yours. I don't have any sponsors right now because I only got like three days to get right. ready. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, man, people find me on Twitter. Just type G Hurricane. That's why I usually have fun on. I have to. I had a, a Facebook fan page, but I deleted it like a dummy because it was just I don't know. It was frustrating. Anyway, um, that's pretty much it. My uh, Instagram. Just look my name up, Gerald Harris with a G. G E R A L D Harris. There's not a lot of us out there. There's definitely not a lot of us fighting. <laughs> so no, thanks for having me. Um, and when you do post this, I'll reshare it. And man, people actually, I have a stronger fan base than I thought. So. Let's see. Well, Saturday's gonna be cool, and then, you know what? You predicted this. You said that you'll see. You said that we'll be talking soon when something pops up. So thanks for sticking with me. What's up, fight fans? If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to see even more interviews with your favorite UFC and Bellator fighters. We've also got coverage at events, including post-fight press conferences and media scrums. And if you like this video, check out the video to my right. It's worth your time.